All right, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the wall, part six. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter five. Now, this is the reason why I like the King James Bible, because it explains itself. It has a built-in dictionary. If you ever are curious as to what a word means, go do a Bible lookup online. For example, the official King James Bible online. Look up a word. Look up the first place that that word appears. And generally, within the context, it will explain to you the meaning of that word. All right, Isaiah chapter 5. Let's take a look. Verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. So here it is. He puts a fence around it to protect it from the animals, right? And he gathers out the stones. Now, let's face it, you, you, you know, plants have a tough time growing with stones, right? And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. You know, people, there's a big difference between domesticated grapes and wild grapes. Domesticated grapes are usually sweet. Wild grapes are oftentimes sour. Verse 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? In other words, what more could I have done? I mean, I, I did everything I could. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done it, done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. Remember in verse 2 it said he fenced it. Well, that's what, a, that's what a hedge is. It's a fence. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. See, all the wild animals are going to come in and eat it up. Verse 6, And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. Very interesting. What did they put on Jesus' head just before the crucifixion? A crown of thorns, right? But there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Verse 7. Here is the Bible explaining the Bible. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join 
house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Every time I read that, woe unto them that join house to house that lay field to field. I always think of cities and apartment buildings. That's what I think when I read this. Till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You see, people, God wanted Israel to be alone in the midst of the earth. And what do the children of the devil want to do? Diversity is our strength. Oh, yeah. They want to mix us all together. God wants us to be alone and separated. And the devil's children want us to be diversity. All mixed up. But, of course, that doesn't apply to them. That only applies to us. Verse 9. In mine ears, saith the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of an omer shall ye yield an ephah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. It's talking about not just wine, but strong drink. We're talking liquor here, people. That's what they mean by when they say strong drink. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial, the tabret and the pipe and wine are in their feasts. But they regard not the work of the Lord. Neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. In other words, they have no knowledge of goodness. They have no knowledge of God. They've got a lot of knowledge about doing evil, but not to do good. Because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst, Therefore, hell, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall re descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, with a cart rope. They say, Let him make speed, and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh, and come, that we may know it. Woe, woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. That used to be me in my teen years. I was mighty to drink. Boy, I'll tell you. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Uh, when they're talking about a reward or a gift, they're talking about bribes, people, because that's what that's what they would do. They would uh, the rich would give a bribe to the judge and the poor would walk away. Not having anything. All right, verse 
24. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign from, to the nations from far, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. Nor shall be weary, nor stumble among them, nor shall slumber, nor sleep, neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows bent. Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day shall they roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens, heavens thereof. Now this is talking about the evil, wicked heathens that God's going to send against Israel and Judah. And I suppose it could apply today as it did thousands of years ago. So, all right, let's go take a look at Isaiah. Isaiah is called the Little Bible for good reason. It has 66 chapters, just like the 66 books in the King James Bible. And it has, the first part of it is, you know, condemnation and judgment. Whereas the last part is uh, like salvation. Well, let's take a look. Isaiah chapter 60. Now, consider this sort of like the salvation chapters in the New Testament. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see, all they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou, then thou shalt see, and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first. Uh, many Bible scholars believe Tarshish is the old biblical name for what is currently now Spain. And the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, 
and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smote thee. See, when we did bad things, the God, God smote us in judgment. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. See, people, that's grace. These people that say that there was no grace in the Old Testament, they're idiots. Uh, they're either idiots, they're deceivers, or they're ignorant. Take your pick. Personally, I, I think most of them are deceivers, but that's just my opinion. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Now where do we hear that? And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Where do we read that? How about Revelation chapter 3? And verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Back to Isaiah 60. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, oh yeah, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am the Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. But thou shalt call thy walls, walls, salvation, and thy gates praise. Now, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4 ties into this really nice. And he shall judge among the nations. You know, that's funny. One place they translate the word nations as nations 
And then they'll turn around and take the same word and translate it as Gentiles. It's the same word. I, I just, I don't get it. I mean, I'm not saying it's an error, because, you know, but it's just, I, I don't know. It's the same word. Gentiles and nations is the same word. Translated two different ways. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Micah 4.3 And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Back to Isaiah 60. Verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God unto uh, and and thy God thy glory. Where do we hear uh, another verse like this? All right. Uh, Revelation 22, verse, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads I think I would rather have the Lord's name in my forehead than the mark of the beast but uh, hey that's just my opinion Verse 5, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Oh yeah. And in Revelation 21 we read, Revelation 21, 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Didn't, uh, don't I always say in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world? Oh, yeah. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. All right. Uh, Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for darkness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God be thy glory. You see, people, there's an awful lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. I mean, 
these people that say they're New Testament Christians, they're idiots. I mean, <laughs> Isaiah told us about the coming of the Lord's kingdom hundreds of years before Christ was even born. Verse 20, The sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw herself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. And when they're talking about mourning, uh, they're talking about sor sorrow. You know, the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Doesn't it say in the uh, book of Revelation that God will wipe away all tears? Verse 21. Thy people also be, uh, shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. Didn't God say that Israel was his vineyard? The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and the small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. All right, I, next, um, I think uh, one or two more studies on the wall, and we're going to close this out. Uh, somebody asked me about Ezekiel, and uh, when the prophet Ezekiel was in the temple and he dug a hole in the wall, so we're getting to that. Now just remember something. Sometimes the Lord puts a wall of protection about us, and he doesn't want us to, as Rob eloquently put it, don't leave the yard, you know, don't, don't break through the wall, don't go over the wall, don't go sticking your hand uh, to the other side of the hedge, you know. And then sometimes Satan builds a stronghold, a wall, that we're supposed to tear down like we did at Jericho. But we're going to, next Bible study, we're going to do the book of Ezekiel. So just keep that in mind. Because uh, God's people of the flesh were in the temple worshiping the devil's doctrines. And Ezekiel was shown this in the spirit so all right well um i hope you've learned something all blessings praise glory and honor to the lamb of god slain before the foundation of the world in jesus precious name amen <laughs>